some of the easier curves that you're probably not going to have to draw. These you need to be able to recognize. You might want to sketch them in the margin if you see some multiple choice questions, but I don't think you'll have one for response. For the business cycle, what you want to do is have time along your horizontal axis and GDP vertical. What tends to happen over time is the GDP goes up and down. Probably not a perfectly smooth curve. We tend to see like weird peaks and valleys. What we see over time with a trend line is that GDP increases. But it's not a smooth transition. What are the phases of the business cycle? When you're moving up, this is a recovery. When the economy is getting better. When it maxes out, it's at a peak. When GDP is falling, if GDP is falling for at least two consecutive quarters, that is a recession or a slowdown if it's not necessarily lasting that long. That's why we have some debate now about whether or not we're actually heading into a recession because GDP is still positive. And when it bottoms out, that's called a trough. Now, where do we get these words from? Those are pieces of a wave. Recovery, peak, recession, trough, and the cycle tends to repeat. That's why it's called a business cycle. How long each of these periods last depends on things like uh, government initiatives and trying to fix it. With the Lapper curve, this is another one that I don't expect you to have to draw, but you may see a question about it. So just in case, here it is. A little bit weird. Now, what this represents is that as we lower the tax rates, we tend to see higher tax revenues up to a point. Okay. As we raise tax rates, we tend to see decreasing tax revenues. Because what happens is at higher tax rates, there's more cheating, and people tend to exploit more loopholes with taxes. At lower tax rates, there's less incentive to cheat, but after a certain point, you're still making less money. So the Laffer curve deals with the relationship between tax rates and tax revenues. And the idea is that lower tax rates, fewer loopholes, less cheating. The third one that I want to go ahead and show you is the Phillips curve. The Phillips curve is the one that relates inflation to unemployment. Conventional wisdom says that what we have is a trade-off. So that when we have high levels of inflation, we're high up on this axis, we have low levels of unemployment. If we have high unemployment, we have low inflation. Now, this is not a permanent thing, however. How do we represent a situation with high inflation or rising inflation and rising unemployment? It makes more sense to say rising than just to say high, because that implies we've got a static situation. So rising inflation, rising unemployment. This curve can shift out. This would be bad, because that says now we can have higher inflation and higher unemployment at the same time, which would be lousy, but that can happen. Now, this curve can also shift further in, which would mean that our possibilities for you know, very high levels of inflation and higher levels of employment are not as good. So, if you have to represent a situation of stagflation, for example, you could do that on the Phillips curve by showing a shift, but not a movement on the curve, because along the curve, all we have is that trade-off. 